So, with Soul Leveling's anime now just hitting the public in mass, millions of people who have never interacted with the media before are now flocking to the fandom. That is to say that there's now millions of people across the globe that understand the hype that is Solo Leveling. And that's awesome. People in every corner of the globe are now beginning their journey of watching Jin Woo Sung go from the weakest hunter of all time to a primordial god-type being of almost infinite power. But that journey takes a long time. In fact, that's what the entire manga was about. And while we've already done a couple of videos about soul leveling, covering the gods of the universe and how the system works, and even explaining everything that non manual readers need to know before watching the anime, I feel as though we've been dancing around one topic that is central to the solo leveling plot. And that's because the one topic that we've been dancing around this entire time is basically what the entire plot of solo leveling is, which is... How powerful is Jin Woo Sung? Now, this is one of the most hotly debated topics in not only the Soul Leveling fandom, but also just the anime fandoms as a whole. Because on one side of the argument, there's people who believe that Jin Woo Sung scales the characters like the Anti-Spiral in Truth, an omnipotent, omnipresent god capable of high-level reality warping, who can tank universe-level attacks over and over and over again. Well, on the other side of the spectrum, there's those who believe that he's powerful, that part is undeniable, but not nearly at the level that those on the other side of the spectrum seem to believe. And this is because when it comes down to it, some of his most important feats are widely misinterpreted or just misunderstood, which I believe leads to people scaling him, let's call it incorrectly. So today, I'm going to do my best to give you a list of Jin Woo Sung's strongest feats and use those feats to scale him in an understandable and reasonable way. But I am going to be trying to avoid spoilers the best I can. But unfortunately, when talking about the greatest feats in the entirety of a manhwa, we are going to be talking about the latest half of the manhwa pretty exclusively but once again i'll be trying to avoid spoilers the best i can and thus by the end of this video i hope that we'll all be able to agree on just how powerful jin Woo sung really is because today we're talking jin Woo sung is stronger than goku but before we get to making two fan bases mad simultaneously guys please for me like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you love the idea of me talking about some of your favorite anime, manga, and manhwa, then you're going to love my anime podcast, to talk is Anonymous, where me and Daddy Mata break down everything that happened in anime and manga this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you want to look like somebody who keeps up with all things anime, manga, and manhwa, go ahead and meander on over into my merch store, TakuzAnonymous.net, where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. So there's really... No perfect way to ever start videos like this, but I would like to lay down some ground rules before we get started. We're going to be trying to, by using Jin Woo's feats and hacks, to break down just how powerful he is from a scaling perspective. And when I say from a scaling perspective, I mean that we're going to break down Jin Woo's strength into several key categories. Those being his attack potency, or AP, his stamina, his speed, and his durability. While there's other classifications that scalers use to tell you how powerful a certain character is, I think they're kind of useless. So I usually stick to the four key ones. And even durability is kind of useless because durability usually just equals attack potency, but that's neither here nor there. In using the feats that we have from him and the hacks that he has access to, we'll be able to give him a grade in each one of these major four categories. And while I've been saying that his hacks will inform the other four categories, hacks do exist as a pseudo fifth category. However, the hacks category doesn't necessarily receive a grade. And while the hacks category is usually the shortest part of scaling an individual character, that is not the case with Jin Woo Sun. See, Jin Woo's story is a story written about a character collecting a myriad of new and interesting abilities, either from leveling up or from defeating strong opponents. And thus, in basically every single fight Jin Woo Sung ever gets into, he leaves with a new ability, and thus, basically a new hack. And thus, when it really comes down to it, Jin Woo Sung has one of the deepest bags in hacks history. So let's get into them and set the stage for just who we're talking about today. Jin Woo Sung starts his story as the weakest hunter in all of mankind. But in one of the earliest trials that he faces as the player or the inheritor of the system, Jin Woo finds himself face to face against a B-ranked assassin. For those of you who aren't very well versed in the soul leveling lore, hunters, as they're called, all fall into some pretty standard RPG classifications. You can be an assassin, you can be a mage, you can be a tank, you can be a warrior, and so on and so forth. And thus, the hunter that Jin Woo finds himself against is a B-ranked assassin. And genuinely, this is the first real battle that we ever get to see from a semi-leveled up Jin Woo. That is to say that this is the first real battle that we get to see from Jin Woo while he is the inheritor of the system. And after the conclusion of this battle, Jin Woo inherits a technique known as stealth, a technique that the B-ranked assassin tried to use against Jin Woo 
to kill him. Now, stealth is kind of exactly what it sounds like, but like with all things in soul leveling, Jin Wu takes it to the nth degree. See, when Jin Wu activates stealth, he is erased from both physical perception and magical perception. That is to say, in essence, he becomes a ghost to even the most powerful entities and hunters on Earth. But Jin Wu isn't an assassin, and therefore he uses this technique rather sparingly. But when he does use this technique, in conjunction with some of his other abilities, like mutilation, he is a terrifying force to behold. Or I guess, to not behold. But if Jin Wu isn't an assassin, then what type is is he? Well, Jin Wu is actually a necromancer, which is a role that he acquires after completing a job change quest, relatively early on in the story. And when Jin Wu achieves this job role, the job role of necromancer, he receives a myriad of new abilities, none of which have to do with the daggers that he's so famous for holding. See, in the broadest sense, becoming a necromancer gives him control over shadows, which in non solo leveling speak gives him the ability to resurrect things that he's killed. And upon resurrecting either the monsters or hunters he kills, he's able to add them to his shadow army. Meaning that if you're gonna battle against Jin Wu, you also have to battle against his shadow army, which is where the scaling for Jin Wu kind of gets a little woogity. And while Jin Wu is able to add any hunter or monster that he kills to his shadow army, there is one exception to the rule, and that's if Jin Wu kills a monarch, one of the bad gods of the universe, he can't add that monarch to his shadow army. Because that would be broken, right? We're definitely worried about that with Jin Wu Sung. It's not like his shadow army reaches 10 million soldiers by the end of the story or anything like that. Oh wait, it does? He gets 10 million blindly loyal soldiers who will do whatever he wants because he has complete and total dominion over them? Oh. Okay, so maybe he doesn't need the monarchs. But if 10 million soldiers wasn't enough for you, he also has shadow exchange and dimensional travel. But let's break those down one by one. They are kind of an extension of each other. That is to say that they're more like an evolution of each other, but let's still break it down one by one. See, Jin Wu, when he starts building his army, gets an ability known as shadow exchange, which gives Jin Wu the ability to switch positions with any shadow in his army, regardless of how far away they might be. If they're on another continent, Jin Wu can switch with them, which not only serves as a guaranteed escape route, but also serves as an incredibly versatile additive in combat, because in essence, it can operate like Toto boogie woogie you thought you were about to strike Jin Wu but now the demon lord is standing in front of you and where's Jin Wu well he's wherever the demon lord was which could be behind you or it could be thousands of miles away but Jin Wu got bored of that move obviously I mean after all only being able to switch to 10 million separate points doesn't give you all that much in terms of versatility and choice and therefore he augmented the shadow exchange ability to just be straight up dimensional travel I mean he was already playing with the idea of being able to teleport from place to place why not just take complete and total control over teleportation see with his newfound teleportation ability Jin Wu Sung has the ability to create gates and these gates can go to whatever part either on the earth or whatever part in any dimension Jin Wu Sung wants to go to. Basically, Jin Wu can go wherever he wants to go instantaneously. And while it does take opening a gate so it's a little bit slower than teleportations like Flying Raijin, it doesn't require something like a mark. If Jin Wu wants to go somewhere, he just goes. But the gates don't only just fit Jin Wu. Nope. The gates can fit thousands of people simultaneously. So not only can Jin Wu be anywhere he wants to in an instant, but he can also teleport entire cities with him just like that. So one could imagine that it'd be pretty difficult to land a blow on Jin Wu. And you would be right. But let's say hypothetically, you do land a blow on Jin Wu. Congratulations. I hope you came correct. Because outside of the fact that there's been several times that he's exchanged blows with the most powerful entities in the entire universe, he's also invulnerable to all poison and illnesses. So if your plan was to debuff him to death, then you might want to start replanning. In fact, he might be immune to more than just illness and poison. Jin Wu might be immune to death itself, as at least on one occasion, Jin Wu has come back from full death. And this is because Jin Wu wasn't selected as the player arbitrarily. Jin Wu was selected as the player because he was the human on Earth who was consistently the closest to death. And thus, as the person who was consistently the closest to death, he was selected as a possible vessel for the Shadow Monarch, who is the King of Death. And the Shadow Monarch is the only being in existence to have both the powers of the Monarchs and the Rulers. Because technically, the Shadow Monarch is both a Monarch and a ruler, who are two warring factions of gods who are either trying to kill humanity or save it. Now, the reason that the Shadow Monarch is both a monarch and a ruler is because when the rulers kill the absolute being, the god of the entire universe that created the monarchs and the rulers, the being Ashborn that was a ruler, switched to the monarchs and became the Shadow Monarch to maintain the balance between the two warring factions of gods. And therefore, Ashborn, or the original Shadow Monarch, was granted the ability
ability of the monarchs while also retaining the ability of the rulers. And now, because Jin Wu is, let's say, associated with the original Shadow Monarch, he now has something known as Monarch's Domain, which increases the stats of his 10 million Shadow Soldiers by 50%. And on top of that Monarch boost, he also has something known as Ruler's Authority, which allows him to control things telekinetically, which means it just got a whole lot easier for Jin Wu to get his hands on you. And that's bad, because Jin Wu also has access to something known as Existential Erasure, which allows him, through the power of the Monarchs, to erase somebody that he kills down to a subatomic level. That is to say that if Jin Wu, after he inherits his Monarch powers, kills you, you're gone. No body to feed to the worms, just gone. And because Jin Wu has access to this ability, he's also immune to other people who have this ability. So if other people try to existentially erase Jin Wu, it doesn't work. He would just die like a regular person. So at least one day he'll die of old age, right? Well, no, because by the end of the story, Jin Wu acquires type one A causality. But what does that mean? Well, I'll explain it for you. See, as you remember, Jin Wu is both a monarch and a ruler, and both monarchs and rulers have type 1A causality. This means if time is altered, Jin Wu is aware of it. See, if somebody out there turned the clock back on Earth 10 years, I wouldn't know. I would simply just be 17 again, because I am not an A-causal being. But if time was altered on Jin Wu's planet, he would not only have all of the memories he had pre-time alteration, but also all of the abilities he had pre-time alteration. That is to say that even though time is turning back 10 years for the planet that Jin Wu was on, time is not turning back 10 years for Jin Wu. So if hypothetically somebody spun back the time to a time where Jin Wu wasn't a hunter yet, Jin Wu would not only still be a hunter, but also would be as as powerful as he was pre-time alteration. So if your idea for killing Jin Wusung was to spin time forward until eventually he died, that's not gonna work. On top of that, it would double not work because Jin Wu has access to age manipulation, which means that Jin Wu is able to be whatever age he wants to be for eternity. All of these are just hacks that he has in universes not controlled by him. But what could I possibly mean with that statement? Great question. See, by the end of the story, Jin Wusung gains control of an entire universe, an infinite size universe, mind you, called the Territory of Eternal Rest. And in this infinite sized sub-dimension, he is the ruler of everything, God, omnipotent, omnipresent, the creator, and the destroyer. And remember those portals that were able to teleport thousands of people to any point in any dimension that Jin Wusung wants them to go to? Yeah. That's where these come into play, because Jin Wu has the ability to drop anything or anybody off in his sub-dimension, where he is God. But Nick, it's starting to sound a whole lot like Jin Wu is omnipotent, I guess. Yeah, it is. In order to truly gauge as to whether or not Jin Wu is omnipotent, let's get into his categories. For those of you who don't remember the beginning of the video, his categorizations are going to be attack potency, also known as AP, stamina, durability, and speed. So let's start with everyone's favorite. AP. Jin Wusung has a ton of very impressive AP feats. Even early on in the story, in a battle against the Blood Red Commander Egress, the fight between Jin Wu and Egress caused a 3.5 magnitude earthquake. And while, so far as earthquakes go, that's definitely a minor one, being able to shake the earth at all is very impressive. He's also killed monsters the size of skyscrapers and demon kings. He's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Earth's strongest hunters and won, and even gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Monarchs, a god class in the soul leveling unit universe and one. Now it's stated that battles between rulers and monarchs can easily destroy planets that don't have mana, meaning that passively rulers and monarchs are easily planet level. Now the reason that gates open all across the world in soul leveling is to enrich earth with mana to make it a stronger planet. And that way in the inevitable battle between rulers and monarchs that takes place on earth, earth itself won't be destroyed. And therefore the reason that earth isn't destroyed later on in the manhwa when rulers and monarchs are fighting on earth is because earth is a much more resilient planet than basically all other planets in the entirety of existence. All of this is to say that rulers and monarchs are very easily planet level. And some of Jin Wusung's most impressive of AP feats come in battles against people like the Insect, the Frost, and the Dragon Monarchs, three of the strongest entities in the entire universe. But Jin Wusung doesn't stop there. Jin Wu, by the end of the Manwa, has battled against every single monarch, the entirety of the Chaos Army, and the Giants, who are said to be as strong as the rulers or the monarchs, continuously and come out on top. And since it's stated that rulers and monarchs can easily destroy planets just passively by battling on top of them, I have no hesitation 
consistency in myself when I say that Jin Wu, who is stronger than rulers, monarchs, and giants, is easily large planet plus outside of his dimension. And all the scaling that I'm going to be doing is outside of Jin Wu's dimension, at least until we get to the end of the video. Now, let's talk about his speed. While speed isn't something that Jin Wu puts points into early in the story, it's something that he realized he would need later on. And the first real time that we see this increase in Jin Wu's speed is in that battle against the B rank assassin I talked about earlier, where it becomes evident that he's fast enough to block point blank stealth based attacks from the assassin. But as time progresses, he only gets faster, which is evidenced by the fact that he's able to dodge point blank lightning attacks from the Demon King that he battles about midway through the story. And eventually, his speed gets to the point where he can, on multiple occasions, react to and avoid a move known as the Breath of Destruction, which is said to travel at the speed of light, making Jin Wu Sung very comfortably faster than the speed of light, or FTL. Now on to his durability. His durability is rather simple. He, by the end of the story, surpasses all monarchs, rulers, and giants. And if monarchs and rulers are able to destroy planets with their battles, that would mean that the durability needs to be at least planet level. And Jin Wu, on multiple occasions, tanks shots from these planet-destroying entities, which allows me to once again place him very comfortably at large planet plus. Now, Jin Wu's stamina is probably the most interesting category that we can talk about here, because his stamina, on account of the fact that he is a player, works rather uniquely. See, Jin Wu's stamina as a player has has a number assigned to it, and the higher that number is in a percentage of 0 to 100, the more drained Jin Wu is. So if Jin Wu's stamina is existing somewhere between 0 and 60, he's not visibly fatigued. Between 60 and 90, he begins to take labored breaths, and it becomes harder for him to move. And in 90 plus, it becomes almost impossible for Jin Wu to move at all. On top of that, how hard it is for Jin Wu to get into the higher numbers of his stamina threshold is dependent on how many keys he has. See, for those of you who are anime only, you'll have seen that Jin Wu Sung has already acquired his first key. And because he only has one key right now, he can rip through his stamina pretty quickly. But by the time that he gets his second key, he's able to hunt down monsters in an environment that would kill an average person in a matter of minutes for days without rest. And by the time that he gets his third key, he's able to do that exact same thing for months on end. And by the end of the story, Jin Wu Sung is able to battle against the strongest entities in the entire universe continuously for 27 years with no rest. Really, the only reason that he stopped at the end of those 27 years is because he won. So Jin Wu Sung's stamina, for all intents and purposes, is limitless, because there's not a lot of fights that go for longer than 27 years. So all in all, how powerful is Jin Wu Sung? It's the question we're all itching to get the answer to. And the answer is incredibly powerful. He has limitless stamina, large planet plus AP and durability, and faster than light speed. And all of that is outside of the dimension in which he rules as God. Within his dimension, he's God, omnipotent, in charge of everything. Truly as strong as one could be, comparable to the anti-spiral and truth from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So which one of these forms do you want to consider? But many people say, when considering the true scaling of Jin Wu, that he does things like transcend time. But Jin Wu doesn't transcend time. His memories transcend time. Other people will say that Jin Wu was universal because they say that he scales to the absolute being. But to assume that Jin Wu scales to the absolute being is to assume that the absolute being battled back against the rulers, and the absolute being was killed by all of the rulers minus Ashbourne simultaneously. And Jin Wu never battles against all the rulers simultaneously. But Ashbourne, the original Shadow Monarch, does and loses pretty badly. Another way that people get Jin Wu sung to universal is that they say that on Terez, the Dragon Monarch, Breath of Destruction attack is able to burn away universes. But the phrasing on the Breath of Destruction attack is that it can burn away anything in the universe, not entire universes. And therefore, the fact that Jin Wu Sung is able to tank the attack and dodge the attack does not mean he himself is universal. But Nick, he's controlling a universe. Doesn't that make him universal? No, not necessarily. He didn't create the universe he's in charge of. And gaining control of a universe doesn't make you universal. Waki, Obito, and Dorothy from Black Clover all have control over universes. But that doesn't make them universal threats. But within Jin Wu Sung's universe, because he's the master of all creation inside that universe, he is universal. In fact, he's far beyond universal. So really, when it comes down to it, the scaling of Jin Wu Sung varies as to whether or not you want to consider him inside of his universe or outside of his universe. But you should know the differences in power between these these two separate scenarios. And with that, that's everything that you need to know about how strong Jin Wu Sung truly is. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that my scaling of Jin Wu Sung was accurate? Do you believe that there's some feats that I might have missed? Tell me in the comments below and why you guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Are we getting sick of solo leveling content yet? No? Okay, good, because it's doing quite well on the page.